Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Daylan Yanagira and we're broadcasting live from the Think Tech studios in Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. You may also go to that website to subscribe to our programs and get, in our, get on our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us how they were able to build successes in the challenging business environment. In the Think Tech studios today, we have Daniel Barrett, the Network General Manager for Volta Charging in Hawaii, and Stuart Zweigel, CEO of the Concierge Company. And between the two of them, we have covered industries from tech to media, super, super exciting. They promised to take the show away. So I'm going to turn it over and um, I want to welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Um, pleasure. I totally want you guys to just talk about how, how you got here. How did you guys meet? What, okay. What's that so, all about? So we agreed that I would start. Um, <laughs> um, so not unlike a lot of people that move to Hawaii, there's sometimes a local connection of some sort. Um, in my case, my wife is half Native Hawaiian. Um, and we've been coming here for decades since we met in college. We've been coming, we've been trying to figure out how do we make it work. And I was kind of indoctrinated from a young age to, you know, go up the corporate ladder and go to school and then join a tech company and then progress there on after. Um, but it was always this big question mark. We would come here and we would speak to everybody in our natural network and we'd try to figure out how do we make it actually happen. Um, and finally, after about 17 or 18 years of career, we decided, well, it's not happening. And we had a young family, and we said, well, about a couple years ago, we said, why don't we just do it? Why don't we just take that risk and take kind of a sabbatical and figure it out when, once we got here? So one thing led to the, to the other, and we, we came out here two and a half years ago. And um, I've been dabbling in the entrepreneurial world and now uh, running things for Volta here in Hawaii and really enjoying it. And Stuart and I met. Uh, um, we're neighbors. We're neighbors. <laughs> oh, okay. so, so my story that. is that um, um, uh, my husband was born here. He did not go to high school here, as everyone would ask. I knew that was going to be. I know, question, I know right? that. I knew that was going to be your question. <laughs> but uh, he uh, he was born here and uh, left when he was very young. And when we first met a long time ago, he had said he always wanted to come back to Hawaii. So we did, and that was a number of years ago. Uh, he attended UH when we came back. I worked for American Savings Bank in the marketing department, and we fell in love with Hawaii. Um, however. Circumstances occurred, we had to go back to the mainland, but he became an opera singer and he has been coming back year after year after year, many seasons performing with Hawaii Opera. So we've had a very long relationship with Hawaii uh, to the point where we always knew we were going to come back. It was just a matter of when, come back full time. And last year was a very pivotal year for us and we decided it was time to make the move back, so we did. Uh, and we, um, you know, fortunately, having a long relationship with Hawaii, we, we know the island really well, uh, and we knew where we were going to move, and we bought a home. And I met Daniel like two days after we moved in, Literally. kind of thing. Yeah. So, but, and, and it was interesting. Uh, meeting and then learning about each other because it, it seemed like we had very similar experiences in terms of our relationship with Hawaii and, and coming back. And, and not only that, but I think that we had the same um, per perceptions and perceived, I would say, frustrations almost. Like we, we, we kind of gelled right away, um, and we started talking about, well, what do you do? What do I do? And what was our, you know, what was our past on the mainland or elsewhere? Because um, I did have an international career as well um, in tech. And and we immediately started um, pretty much pretty much commiserating, and, commiserating. And, yeah, around you know the the opportunities or lack thereof and why and also 
the pace that we were used to and would it be the same and we had a lot of question marks um, and we were both kind of venturing into new spaces um, here locally and so it was it was something that we connected over yeah. pretty much immediately right? yeah and I think it was a, it was really refreshing for me even though I have friends here and I know other people here and because of Jamie's relationship with the opera we know a fair amount of people here but it was really refreshing for me to meet another business person and who you could talk story with and who you could you know just really um, feel at ease with and talk about you know the fears and you know the good things about being here so that was really helpful I think the um, commonality <coughs> Um, is very similar because you folks have very illustrious careers. Um, yeah. Daniel, you in, in IT. My head tech. is going to get too big. <laughs> <laughs> right. Too big for the camera. And, and story, media and entertainment. And media and entertainment. Totally, well, maybe not different ends of the spectrum, but very different. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us a little bit about your, your tech career. Sure. Um, so I kind of grew up as an expat, um, so I was used to very cosmopolitan type environments, whether it be in Asia or Europe or on the mainland, um, major metro metropolises that I grew up in. Um, and so I kind of continued that lifestyle when I finished college. Um, as an American that never really lived in the U.S. for much time, um, I moved back to the States and started in what I call Tech 1.0, which was the semiconductor industry. So people forget, right, that in this day and age, everything that powers everything we do, including every camera and every screen in this room, um, is powered ultimately by components. Um, and that's that was the birth um, um, that was the true birth of tech in the Silicon Valley, right? Uh, the Bay Area. And so, so anyway, I did that, but then I realized that, you know, things were moving dramatically into a different direction. So fairly quickly, I joined Google, um, and I was selling, and, uh, selling ads, like a lot of salespeople do at Google, and then running teams eventually out of their, their Dublin, Ireland offices. Um, and I saw a lot of similarities, uh, if I'm skipping ahead now, um, that still exist today within an island nation like Ireland, what they did to revolutionize their economy, and w which planted a lot of seeds in my mind of how we collectively can impact Hawaii. But anyway, after um, a good stand at Google, I joined LinkedIn. Um, I'm a firm believer in, in networking and the power of the network, and more so than what everybody thinks LinkedIn was made for, which is just a job recruitment site. It's much, much more than that. Um, it's true a place for professionals to network and to grow in their careers um, and and there's a trend that, that you'll see here but then after that I joined a company called Upwork um, formerly known as Elance and Odesk the, which merged and became the largest freelancer platform in the world so we talk a lot about the gig economy today um, and breaking down barriers and being able to work from anywhere and that was a really a flagship company that still exists today and is doing really well um, and then, and then, hence coming out to Hawaii and, and taking my working sabbatical and doing some other things that are way off into you know left field and not at all anything to do with tech. Uh, but here I am back with Volta. I always say once you're in tech, you kind of get reeled back in. You can't really leave. It's like the mob. Um, but that that's kind of that's kind of the storyline. Um, but the trend I wanted to really touch upon was the fact that you know the reason why I liked working for Google uh, for companies like Google or LinkedIn or Upwork or now Volta is because there's an underlying thing like any business professional that wants to be commercially active and at the tip of the spear of technology knows some of the names of the companies that I just mentioned um, and obviously they're great places to work but. What I take away is my own personal, um, how should I say, my own personal mission that coincided with those companies at the time that I was working with them. So Google, the democratization of information everywhere, right? Like if we all think about the movie Goodwill Hunting, I always use that analogy. Um, uh, Matt Damon makes fun of some college kids because he, he's you know the janitor or whatever at Harvard, and he talks about how with the information available in this day and age, and that was way back already, but in this day and age especially, it really kind of equals uh, the playing field, no matter where you are in the world, to get that information and to, to be self-taught or to expand your current knowledge and so on. LinkedIn was truly democratizing um, the opportunity for people to be able to network and connect with each other and better themselves in their careers, and then the gig economy transition within platforms like Upwork um, was truly revolutionary because think about somebody in India or Bangladesh or in Bulgaria could have the same type of earning power potentially almost as somebody that's in Hawaii or in California or in New York. 
uh, depending on how good their work is. Um, and the beauty was that that fractured the old concept of the working world, right? That our parents and those generations would have come from, which was you have to go sit in an office physically and be there. You can actually go and work gigs anywhere as long as you have the knowledge. Um, and that's something that I'm still fascinated by, you can tell, right? Um, and Volta now, um, I think, you know, sustainability, green energy, protecting, especially in places like Hawaii where we talk about protecting our aina and everything so much, something that my mother-in-law would have talked about, still talks about, and she's 82 years old, uh, from Kohala on the Big Island. Um, she tells me stories about, you know, no pollution and riding home and to school and back on a donkey. Um, and, you know, what can we do in places like this to not turn it into, especially with the growing population, um, into a place where, you know, pollution and air quality are detrimental to health overall, right? And as a parent, it matters to me. Um, so that's kind of the, that's the long-winded answer. <laughs> that's amazing. I don't know that I have that long of an answer. <laughs> Uh, so I, I came out of business school with a degree in marketing, and I always gravitated toward uh, uh, entertainment. And so, like I said, when I lived here, I worked for American Savings Bank, and I worked in their marketing department. They had an in-house marketing department at the time. We did wonderful things in terms of creating, you know, TV commercials and and, and campaigns and that type of thing. And so, when I went back to the mainland, I then started to work for an entertainment research company. It was actually the precursor for an online, like the online online kind of database thing that we know about today, subscription service for, for re uh, entertainment research. And it just sort of grew upon that. Uh, I ended up working for Comedy Central at the time. Uh, and that was before I made my way out to Los Angeles, uh, to Hollywood. Hollywood was calling. And uh, I continued to work my way up into management positions. And uh, by the time I left to come back to um, Honolulu. I was chief operating officer for a uh, very large uh, TV production company. Uh, my whole career has primarily been in, in reality TV production. And, um, you know, I've dealt with networks, I've dealt with agents, I've dealt with talent and, and movie stars and all those kinds of people. Um, but I've always been on the operations side, which is what I, which is where my, um, sort of my, um, my sweet spot is. And uh, I left all the creative up to the creatives, but always felt like I needed to provide an operational infrastructure for them to do their best work. And uh, so when I came back to Hawaii, I really thought about just, you know, looking for a job in media and figuring out, you know, that kind of path. But, you know, I've always been involved in, in as I say, you know, dealing with the merging of personalities and, and how people work together and, 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 and dealing with creating environments for people to do their best work, which is part of what inspired me to create this company. Um, so that's my long winded version of how I got to where I am. Well, I think it's also an interesting conversation on how um, IT meets operations yes. and, mm -hmm. and how, how that all comes together. Um, I mean, they, 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 can't, they can't exist without, without each, each other. other. Right. Yeah. You know, especially in the world that we're in today, they can't exist without each other. Right. Um, so we're going to go to a quick break. Um, but when we come back, I want to talk about um, what your experiences have been in entering the Hawaii market mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. um, for having very large company, large corporate experiences, how you see that as transferable to Hawaii, the landscape in Hawaii, and what the possibilities are, what the opportunities you see. Um, and then, of course, I, I want to hear more about Volta and I want to hear more about the concierge company. Okay, so cool. let's take a quick break sure. and um, we'll be back. This is Business in Hawaii and we'll see you back here shortly. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea 
is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. The parents are older. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. And today I am honored, super excited to have Stuart Zweigel of the Concierge Company and Daniel Barrett of Volta Charging Hawaii. Um, lots, lots of talk going on here about the brain drain and, and, and all that buzz, you know, being tech and being media related, you guys have all the buzzwords going. So I'm just going to let you take it away. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so I, I, I talk about the brain drain all the time, actually. Um, and it's something that I'm extremely passionate about because now being... Can, can you say what that is? Sure. Yeah. So the brain drain, from my perspective, is, and it's happened in other places in the world, if you take, once again, Ireland as an example, there's more Irish people living outside of Ireland than in Ireland, and many more. Like, we're talking about 12 million versus 4 million or something. And the reason why it happens is because of opportunity or lack thereof. And there's a perception in Hawaii, and probably not a false perception, that um, there aren't as many opportunities for, for making as much income and advancing in people's careers if they stay here on the islands, right? And a lot of the people in my wider family talk about it all the time because we all have kids, nephews, nieces, and so on, that we all encourage. Go to college on the mainland, go to the best colleges in the world, who cares? Um, but wouldn't it be great if they had that opportunity to come back? And I think that we're at an inflection point right now where a lot of people are realizing that these really great brains are leaving and they're not coming back. And if they do, it's for whatever negative reasons. Or the um, parents have aged and they've decided to come back to take exactly. their parents or something exactly. like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm excited about the opportunity, though, because that's, that's something that could be highly reversible, right? Um, tax structure could be one thing to encourage more entrepreneurial spirit. Um, and that's something I, I feel strongly about. But, but more importantly, just fostering that entrepreneurial spirit from a younger age. Um, I recently went, so Volta Charging is actually, so it's Volta Industries, but we call ourselves Volta Charging, so everybody knows that we're free electric vehicle charging stations with sponsored media. Um, but, but I went to, it's a blue startup company. So Hank Rogers, the Tetris founder, um, helped start and is leading um, what we call blue startups here in Hawaii, and they're right across the street, actually. Um, and they um, are kind of, uh, well, they're not kind of, they are a startup accelerator that bring in people that have great ideas, and they're from all over the nation, potentially, or even the world. And I went to one of their events the other day, and I was highly, highly impressed to see the caliber of people, the type, it was kind of like a Shark Tank type environment where they had to each do their demo pitch um, because they finished their their three-month period of hand-holding, and they're going to go out into the big world and try to raise more capital. But nevertheless, I was really impressed. And, and, and But when I spoke to people over there that are managing the Startup Accelerator, they said the problem too, all too often is um, the companies will start out here and have a great idea or whatever, and then they'll think they need to go to the mainland to get subsequent funding. And that's what they do. And then they're generating more jobs and a better economy in whatever city they end up in versus here. Mm -hmm. And so how, does, how do we break that? I think the gig economy, the fact that we have access to, to IT, we don't have to necessarily be anywhere. Why not be in Hawaii? Yeah. So for example, you know, here uh, in the creative community, uh, have you heard of DBET? Do you know what DBET is? Mm -hmm. uh, Department of Business, Economic mm -hmm. Development, and Tourism. Sure. And so, <laughs> so they have the Arts and Culture Branch, okay. which oversees the Hawaii Film Office and, and what's also called the Creative Industries Division. And they have uh, part of that called Creative Lab Hawaii. And that is on the creative side to foster creative entrepreneurs here in Hawaii. And I only bring that up because um, I've only recently discovered that, uh, hear, heard about it, and I think that's a really wonderful thing. And so I think to your point, though, um, you know, I, I don't know about that startup that you were talking about, but th the message needs to be out there more. Right. The, 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 you know, there needs to be, I, I think the wonderful thing about Ho Hawaii, and part of the reason why I created a company, is the, the community and the culture here is is so tight-knit and so close that we're all looking out for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
Certainly there are some barriers to creating a company and all that kind of thing, but in general, it's small and it's intimate and it's people look out for each other. So if people can, if we can figure out a way for people to come together and get the message out there and it's education, it's communication, those are, you know, the, I mean, it's baby steps too. Those are the things that can, that can start to happen to, you know, counteract that, that brain drain, yep. I would imagine. Yep. I think what's important for our young people are to hear from entrepreneurs like yourselves mm -hmm. who have ventured out and done lots of really exciting things and decided to make Hawaii your landing spot. Mm -hmm. um, I think that our young people need to hear from people like yourselves and encourage them to open their eyes to entrepreneurship. Um, and. And I think our executives should get out into our schools yeah, and talk to our kids. Yeah, kids. I think that, um, you know, for me, when I was inspired to create the company, part of the reason I was inspired to create the company is because even though I have a relationship with Hawaii and I'm familiar with Hawaii and I, I feel like I speak the culture as opposed to just understanding the culture, which is very important here, um, you know, I, um, I, uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> it's because you have so much going I, on. In yeah, there. exactly. Um, uh, it's all good. It's so all good. We were, talking, uh, we, were, we were talking about it at the break, right? We were talking about how you cannot. So well, we were talking about how a lot of people on the mainland view the business climate here in Hawaii as something that is closed off to them, right? And so maybe that will stifle the spirit of people to say, you know what, I want to start a company and I want to live wherever I want to live. And especially if we're talking about millennials, right? Mm -hmm. Millennials don't have those same chains and barriers that we all may have grown up with. And good, because they truly buy into the whole mentality of, you know, you're married to who you are in your career, but not necessarily to a company. And I think that's a great thing, right? Um, if people are, million, are willing to move around and be mobile and willing to start companies in desirable locations to live, I mean, let's take CNN as an example, right? Every time they pan out when one of the presidents is here, when President Obama used to come out here, and they would pan out at the end of the interview and the guy's wearing shorts, and then everybody back in the studio would be like, oh, it's a tough life and all that. But why should, this is how millennials think, because I've, I've managed large groups of millennials and they've told me, like, why should it be a tough life? If, if, you, if you have the background and you have the motivation and you have the willpower and the ambition to work, then why should you live somewhere where it's detrimental to your health or you just don't like it because you don't like the mountains or you don't like, you know, cornfields or whatever it may be, or big cities, and you'd rather be on a big city on the water. Um, so I think mentalities are going to change, and, and it's up to people here in Hawaii, us collectively, once again, I think that's what you're alluding to, is to say, yes, it's a tight-knit community. There's a big respect factor. You can't just come in here and bulldoze your way in. Right. But at the same time, you know, it, it's the aloha spirit, right? I mean, if you come in and you respect and you right. do something that's good for the local community while also growing a business and building a business, then, then people are going to be well, highly motivated to embrace you because right. it's something that is lacking here on the tech side once again, right? Yeah, and what he said. Consumer. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, what Thank you said. for saying that for me. <laughs> I know, we're it. neighbors, man. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was saying. When I know, we right? We were trying to structure this interview. <laughs> exactly. like, yeah, whatever you say. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. I fall asleep thinking about these things, right? It's <laughs> a hard life. <laughs> I have, I have a th uh, almost three year old. She's going to be three in two weeks, and, and I have a six and a half year old girl, and they're my life, right? And I want them to go explore the world, but if my wife and I, which it looks like, are going to end up finishing out our careers and retiring here, I don't want them to only come and visit. I want them to have the option at least to thrive in their careers. Yeah, I know, and it starts with that kind of attitude, too. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And as a consumer, I want you to spend time with me. I don't want you to blitz into my life and right. uproot it and, and show me all this stuff, and then, and then off you go, yep. right? I want you to spend time with me and build that relationship with me so I can hang over the fence and go, hey, neighbor, what do you think of, about this, right? Or what? Well, I'll take that, but are you going to come and service it for <laughs> I'm me? Not, I'm <laughs> laughing because I'm just saying, thank God we're across the street or else we I need know. to be like, hanging over the fence. Well, half, the half the time we're talking across, the cars are coming down, we're talking across, we can't even hear what we're saying, but we're still talking. <laughs> But we agree. But we agree. <laughs>
<laughs> um, in a couple of minutes, I, I want you to kind of tell me what Volta Charging is doing in Hawaii. Okay. You know, I think it's it's a it's a new company name, and yep. it's just yep. like with the concierge. Yep. So believe yep. it or not, a lot of people know Volta Charging because it's one of those success stories from the Blue Startup Acceleration Program, um, and and the company has done very well. And the company actually started out here, and it's one of those tech stories where it was literally started in a garage in a friend of the CEO's house in Kahala or something like that. And if he sees this, sorry, Scott, um, <laughs> I bastardized that whole story. I'm trying to do it quick. Um, but in any case, um, it started in a garage, so to speak, and then they went through an accelerator program and they got some funding, and then they, they were doing fairly well, but they decided to move to the mainland to get what they thought was the only place to go get funding, right? And we've been very successful up to now. We just closed a Series C for another 35 million, so that takes us to over 65 million in the last four years of, of raising capital. Um, and, and the company's in true growth, um, but me being out here and somebody that had joined um, Volta prior to me joining that used to work with me in Europe at Google um, tracked me down and said, hey, we think that you have the right skill set to help Volta here. And help Volta how? Obviously, to maintain our network, we have 34 stations on Oahu, um, which is pretty good for an island this size. It's one of the larger markets. Um, but um, we, we, as I mentioned, it's free electric vehicle charging, um, and it's free for the sites. We actually install these stations, we maintain them, we take care of everything. And so our site partners, meaning the malls, like Alamoana Mall or Kahala or wherever that may be, they love it because people come and they, it's, it's, an, it's an added attraction for EV drivers, but also it's a huge media opportunity for sponsorships. And that's how we actually make money and pay our bills. Um, so we can provide it for free to the community, um, but at the end of the day, the sponsors who sponsor it are ultimately the heroes because they are associating themselves with sustainability, and we're finding that there's huge brand uplift in perception among the public because, you know, as we talked about, everything is very um, local and community oriented here, and you know, when a company is actually doing something or sponsoring something that is good for the community, um, then there's direct tangible benefits. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm handling the media side. I'm also handling the operational side for Volta out here. Tell us a little bit about how your experience was coming into Hawaii. And remember that question, because I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you that one, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Overall, in, in business, you mean? Yeah. Um, so I'll actually say that I've, I am pleasantly surprised. Um, we, when I was in Europe, we talked about how every single country, so Europe is a union, but every country has very dramatically different cultures, and you have to kind of be a chameleon and adapt if you want to sell into, sell, which is what I, my gig is, into any of those different cultures. In Hawaii, I find people are very open to sitting down and talking, um, but I will say it's not a cold call mentality. Everything is done through a connection. Right. Um, Stuart and I, Stuart's been helping me out a lot. Uh, my wife's family network has been helping me out a a lot, um, and then it's kind of snowball effect, right? And if you are going back to the respect thing, if you're respectful and you and you do it the right way, I would say, and that's a much longer conversation. Um, I think that uh, people then are very happy to refer you to somebody else, and so on right. and so on. And you very quickly realize that I mean, these are people through the discussions, um, even at the C level at any of these corporations or organizations that I'm meeting with. You know, these are people that I see at Magic Island when I'm running next to my kid trying to learn yeah. to ride a bicycle, right, yeah. and stuff like that. So. Stuart, I want to hear about the concierge yeah. company. Tell, tell well, us about Well, I'm going to start with that okay. second one first, because when I got here, and then I'll, I'll tell you about it, but when I got here, what I immediately started to do, and that's how you and I met, for example, is I just started to put myself out into the community. Um, friends that I have here, that are very good friends and long-term friends, said to me, you know, listen, if you're going to do this, you need to be out and about. You need to be present. You need to be meeting people. You need to be in front of them. And, you know, that's an old school sort of mentality anyway. Um, LinkedIn, sure, I've been doing a lot of LinkedIn, uh, emails and all that kind of thing. But, you know, people don't respond so quickly here. Text, you know, people don't respond so quickly here. So I literally put myself out into every networking situation I could think of. And, and I think that that has really paid off because that contact, that, that, um, that emotional connection, connection with people, right. that talking story, that, that, you know, 
listening to other people's experiences and those kinds of stories, that's what builds relationships. I don't want to cut you off, but okay. I want to make sure that we hear yes. about the concierge company so and what it is. That you what do. I was inspired to do when we moved here was the idea that there was no one place to go for anyone to figure out you know, what you needed to do, what you needed to know to be an executive in Hawaii. And that really was my inspiration. And so what I did is I created this company to help executives relocate here, uh, workplace concierge services, and general lifestyle management kinds of concierge services. Real quick, tell our viewers where they can find you. Uh, I am at www.theconciergeco.com, uh, T-H-E, concierge.co.com. Awesome. I'd be remiss if I didn't say just find me on LinkedIn, Daniel D. Barrett. Um, otherwise, just shoot me an email, daniel at voltacharging.com. Um, I do answer fairly quickly. So. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for um, joining me t on the show today. I wish we had more time. You guys no. are just like, super, super exciting. So a big thanks to our production staff. They always pull this together without a hitch. Um, if you want to be on our show, please feel free to shoot us an email at shows at thinktechhawaii.com. We air every Thursday at 2 o'clock, and we look forward to seeing you here next week.